Hey, how's it going? My name is Paldi2, and today we're going to be taking a look at this $3,000 laptop from 2004. The Dell Inspiron 9100 was an amazing laptop at its release. Being one of the most powerful portable PCs at the time, this laptop was made for gamers or content creators looking for the best of the best. The gigantic beast weighing over 7 pounds came equipped with a desktop Pentium 4, 2 gigabytes of DDR RAM, that's right, DDR, the original. The laptop also came with a gigantic 60 gigabyte hard drive and powerful ATI mobility Radeon 9700 graphics. It even came with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. In 2004, the laptop cost an astounding $2800, but only a year ago I saved it from the scrap heap. Up until a few months ago, I wasn't even able to turn the system on, as it didn't come with the battery and the charger had sparked out and died. However, I got my hands on a girthy 130 watt charger. It's enough to turn it on, but in order to get optimal performance, one would need a massive 150 watt charger. Along with the power comes a selection of ports. This system came equipped with four USB 2.0 ports, Ethernet, a dial-up modem, and three display outs, including VGA, S-Video, and DVI. Taking a look at the 15-inch screen, it still looks decent, even by today's standards, as it rocks a 19 by 10 aspect ratio, which is quite odd, with a pixel count of 1920 by 1200. To put this into perspective, the maximum quality that you can watch this video in doesn't fit all of the pixels on that screen. How's Along with going, the high guys? pixel count, the Inspiron has quite nice speakers, even if I was missing the subwoofer, as the subwoofer comes attached to the battery. Speaking of the general experience, typing on the keyboard was great, as the keys offer decent travel with a nice tactile feel. One thing that wasn't too great though was the trackpad. Trackpads have come a long way since 2004, and by current day standard, this one is absolute garbage. This laptop also comes with a little mouse nub on the keyboard if uh, you're into that kind of thing. Additionally, using the laptop, editing Word documents was a breeze, and surfing the web wasn't too bad, as long as you tiptoe around it like a minefield, as Windows XP hasn't been supported for years. I wouldn't recommend going onto any website that has a lot of images, as the laptop might struggle. When it comes to video streaming, this laptop really can't handle it no matter what resolution you try to stream in. However, while this computer won't play newer titles, it's able to handle games from around the same era with little sweat. Half-Life Steam Edition was very playable, with a widescreen resolution of 768p and normal textures. It stayed above 60fps for most of the time. This was the same case with Counter-Strike 1.6 as both games use the same Half-Life 1 game engine. Now comes the question, should you buy one of these? I wouldn't recommend it, but if you pick one of these up for free or for a low enough price, and you enjoy playing games from the late 90s or early 2000s, it might be worth taking a look at. Looking at a laptop this old was quite an interesting experience for me. And if you thought it was interesting too, consider leaving a like and commenting down below. I hope that you've enjoyed this video, and if you did, there's more on the way, so consider subscribing. That's all for now, and I'll see you in the next one.